Hi everyone, my name is Vita. In this video, I'm gonna go over how I make one of these ashtrays for my little art shop called Raspberry Gloom. I currently sell on Etsy, so the link for that will be in my description below. I started out with a slab of clay that I rolled out using a little rolling pin, and then I grabbed a candle, which I used to trace the circle for the base of the ashtray. There was no way I was gonna freehand that circle, but look how cute this candle is. My dad got it for me at Target one day. He just was like, here is a candle. And I was like, oh wow, thanks, I love it. And I think it's so cute. And now I use it as a clay tool. Anyways, once I'm done cutting my circle, I move the extra clay to the side because I'm gonna be using that later and I start smoothing out the edges. I take that extra clay from earlier and I start using a little piece to roll out a coil. I'm gonna use this coil to wrap around on top of the base of my ashtray to use as the walls. Once I have my coil where I want it to be, I take this little tool and I start merging the wall into the base. I go from the bottom down and I keep doing this until I've got it all the way around. To get rid of the rough edges, I use my finger to further smooth out and merge the clay together. I also do the same process on the outside of the ashtray. Um, this can be a little tedious because of the extra clay that might come up, but it'll, it'll get easier, especially when you use water. This can create a lumpy finish, so I try to use water as much as I can during the sculpting process, and then whatever lumpiness is left over, I just smoothen that out with a um, sandpaper sheet. I didn't always use sandpaper, so at the time of this recording, when I made this ashtray, I did not smoothen it out with sandpaper once it was dry. However, I think a nice lumpy look can contribute to the value of a handmade product. The sentimental aspects, I guess, but for my personal work, I like to smoothen out my pieces. I use a slicing tool to create the little divots in a typical ashtray to hold your cigar, your cigarette, your joint, whatever you want to smoke. I don't care. It's up to you. I slice down twice on each of the four sides to create it, and then I just scoop it out using that little tool. I don't measure how far the divots are from one another, I just eyeball the distance and try to get it as even as I can. I think I do a pretty good job, so yeah. Uh, then I just smoothen out any of the final details and get to blow drying. I don't use a blow dryer anymore. I put my pieces in, in the toaster oven now on a very low temperature. I googled how to put air dry clay in the oven and figured out a way to do it. So yeah, it makes life a lot easier. Um, during the summertime, I do like to put my pieces outside so that they can just soak up in the sun and have a nice natural moment. Once my ashtray is dry, I start the drawing process. Um, I cannot paint for shit without a drawing beforehand, so this is my process. Um, I'm drawing a crescent moon, so I used a, the lid from another candle. Not the one from Target from my dad. This one's a pumpkin spice candle from Ross. My issues with perfectionism are showcased right off the bat here. I took forever to draw this stupid crescent moon. I just could not get a perfect enough look for my stupid standard at the time. I don't know. Like, the first one was fine. I have no idea why I went through this so many times, but I did want it to get as perfect as possible, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, there it is. There's my perfect crescent moon. Once I'm finally done with that, I get into sketching the face. I draw the nose, I draw the eyes, you know, the basic parts of a face. I'm sorry that my hand is covering what I'm drawing at certain points in the next few parts. Um, I didn't think of that while filming and drawing at the same time. I'm still getting used to this. Um, but yeah, I proceeded to also draw the mouth over and over and over again because I didn't like the way it looked and I could not get it to be pretty or whatever the fuck I wanted to achieve at this m moment in time. But yeah, once I finally got it, I started drawing the smoke. Um, this is turning into a very chaotic voiceover, but we're going with it. I start drawing around the crescent moon to get a nice circle, and I finally get into painting. So I'm blending my colors. Um, I get a little gross gooby. Ew, that's dried up paint from the bottle. I freaking hate when that happens. Then I proceeded to fill in the crescent moon, but I didn't like that yellow. It was too gold, so I mixed in a brighter yellow and filled in the rest of the crescent moon. I'm gonna try to reel in my energy a bit here. I feel like it's a little too all over the place, but I'm just having fun doing this, I guess. Um, voicing over, I mean. It's kind of just fun to watch over what I've already edited, knowing that all I have left to do is do a voiceover, even though that can also take me a long time. Um, but yeah, uh, regardless... We're gonna go back into the video. 
So I started mixing some colors to get some nice shadows as my lips and my nose, my eyelids. Initially, I wanted to use this shade of gray for the smoke cloud, but I decided that it was too dark. I wanted a lighter look to kind of tie into the whole transparency of a realistic smoke cloud. I did this part sporadically for some reason, but I did get it done. Um, after the smoke cloud, I went in on the background and started painting my space sky. Um, I guess it's just space, right? When I paint on clay, I usually like to paint my subjects first and then I go into the background to get a nice clean line on my subjects. However, on canvas, I don't like to do that. I like to paint my background on first and then my subject. I find that to be a lot easier. I don't know why it's different between the two, but I it is, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. But yeah, that's, that's just what works for me. I know a lot of artists have a really strict preference, but I kind of just go with whatever feels right in the moment. I think that's the most important thing you can do, especially with art. I haven't been doing that great with that as of the most recent months, but I've been trying to get back into the true passion of creating and just reminding myself that art is meant to be fun. It's meant to be creative. It's meant to make an internal impact. I have a tendency of overcomplicating things and making things that are seemingly easy way harder than they should be even before I've even started them. For example, going in to do this line work on every piece I do is always so intimidating because I just have this constant chatter in my head like what if I don't do it right? What if it like comes out all messy? And it's like, bitch, this is a process. This is art. Like it is not meant to be perfect. You have to let go and just kind of go with it and I think that's when the best art comes to be. To decrease my anxiety towards working on the line work, I use a pen to do some of the smaller details like this. I like to use this to get a nice clean and thin line. I'm using a Precise V7 Fine Point Pilot Pen in this video, but I switched to an oil pen uh, from Craftsmart, I believe. Um, I got it at Michael's. It works a lot better since it's actual paint. Um, but yeah, then I go in and I paint the back of the ashtray and this is what the ashtray looks like right before I add the sealer to it. I used to use Mod Podge, but I upgraded to polyurethane, which is more expensive, but you get a lot out of it. And I just found that it has a much cleaner and glossier finish, which I really enjoy. Um, but Mod Podge is still a nice, uh, cheaper option, especially if you don't do this thing often. This is the finished product. I hope that you love the way this ashtray turned out and I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe uh, and thank you for watching. I hope that you have a beautiful day.